Yeah, so our next speaker, uh, Faraz Abukadije. Um, I nailed that because I was like, hey, how do you, I pronounce your last name? And he's like, it's like if you're throwing a party and you need to book a DJ. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Um, super catchy. You must do that a lot. Um, so yeah, while he's getting set up, he's worked uh, at places like Intel. Uh, he is a maintainer for WebTorrent, which is a BitTorrent streaming okay. site. Um, and he has a bunch of open source work. He actually, that's how he makes his living. Um, so yeah, super excited. Let's give a big, big, big round of applause our keynote speaker today, Faraz Abuka DJ. Welcome to the Lost Art of MIDI. I'm honored to be here all the way from California. Medellin is amazing. Uh, thank you so much for, for having me here um, and allowing me to share my interest in um, MIDI with you. So we'll be touching a lot of interesting topics today, including uh, WebAssembly, Web Audio, uh, Web Components, and also how we can bring back the VG Sound HTML tag from the dead. <laughs> so uh, just a warning up front, if any of you have epilepsy, there's going to be a lot of flashing lights and bright uh, things in this presentation, so you might want to leave if that affects you. <laughs> so before we start, um, a little about me. My name's Faraz. Uh, I started WebTorrent, a torrent library for the web, and um, also built WebTorrent Desktop with some many other contributors, uh, actually including uh, Diego, who is in the audience here. Um, and um, it's a desktop torrent app that streams torrents instantly. And we recently passed 1.6 million downloads, which is pretty cool. Um, I also worked on standard JS, a linter that catches JavaScript errors and enforces consistent code style. And I've been doing open source since 2014. And I started like full time on it in 2015. Um, and you probably use some of my NPM packages. And it's been a lot of fun doing open source full time. Uh, right now, though, I'm actually back in graduate school studying computer science. Um, and that's also uh, kind of a bit of a change, but a lot of fun as well. So, my adventure with MIDI started when I was reminiscing about the days of GeoCities and Angel Fire. In the early days of the web, there were a lot of quirky and fun websites to discover. And every website had at least five GIFs, sometimes many, many more. And uh, the web was just a different place. <laughs> Uh, raise your hand if you remember these days. Yeah, okay, most people. So lots of sites were built by <laughs> passionate hobbyists who didn't have a formal background in programming, and they just had some like message that they wanted to get out or something like this, um, like this site here. And um, web design patterns had not been established yet, so web pages usually looked pretty different from each other, um, like 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 this page. Also, like. This page, the Space Jam site, which is the, uh, one of the oldest sites that uh, I'm familiar with. And um, you know, this diversity of, of like, designs made the web a lot of fun to browse, because you never knew what you would discover next. Uh, this is one of the first online webcams. Uh, it's called the Fogcam, because San Francisco is full of fog. Um, and this, this webcam just broadcasts a view of the fog. So um, today, actually, it's actually just smoke because of the wildfires happening in California, which looks kind of like fog. But this page has been continuously broadcasting video um, since 1994, uh, and it's still online. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> and of course, there's the classic uh, Zombocom. Uh, Welcome to who knows Zombocom. this one? This is Zombocom. <gasps> Welcome. This is Zombocom. Welcome to Zombocom. <laughs> yes, it's, it, that's literally all the site does for like 20 minutes. Um, so, but by far, like one of the most defining features of early websites, it wasn't the weirdness. It was actually, in my opinion, the auto-playing background music. Um, and usually, this was like in a MIDI format. Um, who remembers this? Okay, cool. Yeah. So, it's hard to describe MIDI files if you've never heard them before. But the sound of the synths and the nostalgia and all the endearing tunes, um, they remind me of like the very first MS-DOS games that I played when I was a kid, and also like the first websites that I was visiting. Um, this is what, it, what this file sounds like here. <laughs> it 
So, you know, back in, in those days, the sites used to use the BG Sound HTML tag to add some spice to their pages. You know, it wasn't enough to just have content. You had to have, like, you know, a soundtrack for every page. Um, the, the best part about BG Sound is actually that there's no UI from the tag. There's no player controls. There's no way to stop the music except to turn down your speakers, literally. So the adventure with MIDI starts uh, with my quest to just play a MIDI file. So I, I was like realizing like, I haven't actually heard of MIDI in years. Um, so I was just, like searching for a website to, to play, uh, to, to, a website with the BG sound tag in it so that I could you know, play one of these MIDI files. And I was really disappointed that every site I went to, the tag didn't seem to work. Um, I don't know what was, like, I didn't realize what was, what was wrong. Um, I even went back to my very first web page that, that I ever met, uh, made, which was um, this site, which is actually my real first website that I made when I was 12 years old. <laughs> um, and the MIDI's on this site also stopped working, which is very sad. So I found this MDN page that says basically BG Sound was actually never a standard. It was only ever supported in Internet Explorer, and uh, that was news to me. And at some point, even IE dropped support for it. So I realized my understanding of how MIDI's work was quite wrong, and I had to start asking myself a lot of questions. Like, how do MIDI files even work? And are MIDI's still even used today in any way? And what does MIDI even stand for? So MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, as I learned. And it's a way to control uh, devices and sound, so like synthesizers, samplers, and computers, so they can communicate with each other using MIDI messages. DJs or people who create music hook up all their devices to each other and they speak uh, to each other using MIDI. So if you do music production, this is probably not news to you, but it was, it was news to me. And this is actually, I think, the number one way that MIDI is still in use today. And the first synthesizer to support the MIDI was actually this uh, Prophet 600, which was released in 1982, which is 36 years ago, which is, which is absurd, I think. Um, the MIDI protocol is so old, it's actually older than HTTP, which is, in, which is absurd. <laughs> if you look at these protocols here, like, it's very surprising, you know, like, SSH, it wasn't even, SSH wasn't even around for 13 years, so it's a very, very, very old, old protocol. Um, so I learned a little bit how they work, so I'm just going to share the high level with you. So sound is actually not sent via MIDI. So if I press like a key on a keyboard, it just sends an event which instructs some other equipment to start playing sound. So you need an instrument to actually produce the sound. The message just contains basic information like, uh, please start playing this note, and please stop playing this note. So if you actually look at the message, the, the, the message on, you know, in the protocol, you get something like this. Um, so the, the 90 there is the note on message that we saw from the previous slide. This, the 3C is uh, saying which key to play, and then the, third, the 40 is actually the, uh, how hard the key was pressed. It's also known as the velocity. And so you just get a stream of these coming through, and uh, that's, that's all MIDI is, really. There's, there's a little bit more, but that's, that's the main, main idea. And so there's this standard that actually describes how it works called general MIDI. And um, you have 128... Um, possible notes that you can play, which is 10 octaves, and you can have at uh, most uh, 16 sounds playing at once. And uh, they have what they call 128 programs, which is uh, basically instruments, different, 128 different instruments that you can select from. So they, they categorize them into these different categories. Um, each family has eight instruments. And a general MIDI does not actually define the way that the sound will be reproduced, only the name of the sound. So this is kind of interesting, because basically, if you're playing back a MIDI, you end up getting different sounds depending on what's playing it back. So um, this is like the piano set here. These are the eight piano choices. And you can just get an idea of what this sounds like in different pianos. This is one, one of the piano choices. So MIDI is literally just a collection of these messages um, into, and put into a file. And it can be read and played later. It's basically like digital sheet music. So um, MIDI files were one of the only audio formats supported by Internet Explorer. And they were used because they're relatively small compared to the alternatives of the day. Um, there, were, there was WAVE 
AU and MP3, and uh, MIDI files like only 40 kilobytes compared to like multiple megabytes for some of these other file formats. And this is because, like I mentioned before, the audio is not actually in the file. The audio is just saying what notes to play, and then the, the program that's playing back the file actually has the sounds of all the instruments. It has basically like a, almost like a database of every possible note that could be played. So MIDI files show, show up in a lot of uh, surprising places. Um, they were used as uh, music in early MS-DOS and Windows games. Who remembers Duke Nukem? Yeah, okay, nice. Uh, they're actually also used to synchronize lights in light shows. So this is actually powered by MIDI. It's pretty cool. Uh, there's also a program called Synesthesia, which is really cool. It can help you learn to play piano. Um, so it, it shows, you basically drop a MIDI file on it, and then it just shows you the notes to play the song. And um, there's this genre of, of YouTube videos called Impossible MIDI, which is super interesting. People basically make imp impossible to play songs using MIDI, and then the note patterns make these insane pictures. <laughs> So there, there's like tons of these on, on YouTube if you're interested. Um, you can also drop MIDI files into a program like GarageBand and it'll give you all the notes so you can start you know, uh, remixes and things really easily from these files. And um, last one that's kind of interesting is some people even like make, try to make art. So this is the song Bohemian Rhapsody, but they spelled the words Bohemian Rhapsody with the notes and it also plays the song. So I learned all about how MIDI worked, and I discovered even a few surprising places uh, that it's used, like you saw. And then so my next goal was like, let's actually try to play back one of these files on a modern computer. And funny story, like I, I unzipped this big archive of MIDIs, and I tried to play a few in VLC, which can usually play everything. And uh, the first two that I picked just didn't work, so I, I assumed VLC couldn't play it. And so this actually started me on a quest. I was like, if, if even VLC can't play these files, this is crazy. You know, I should make a site to help people play these. Um, it turns out I got really unlucky. VLC actually does play MIDI's. I just picked like two corrupted files originally. So uh, basically, this whole talk and this whole project is, you could say, maybe didn't need to exist because <laughs> VLC can already play it. But um, what's cool about um, what we're going to do here is we're going to make a site so we can bring, the, you know, I mentioned that this BG sound tag back. And also, I wanted a way to share them with people. So it's not enough to just open the files you know, on my computer. I want to be able to send a link to people. So this is when I decided to build a new site to basically host these MIDIs. So um, the first step was to figure out how to play them back in modern browsers. And for my first attempt, I tried building a MIDI player from scratch in JavaScript. And I tried using like the web audio API to synthesize some instruments and code. And I thought this would be really nice because the files would be, would be really small because I'm not embedding all these sound files. It's just generating it with a, with a bit of code. And you know, that should be enough to produce the instrument sound. But actually, it was really bad. It sounded terrible. I didn't have the audio engineering skills to pull it off. So uh, I ended up settling for an approach where I compiled a MIDI player written in C to WebAssembly using Inscripten. How many people here have heard of Inscripten? Okay, that's actually less than I expected. Um, so Inscripten is um, it's a program that lets you take um, some C or some Rust, some native code, and compile it into uh, like a binary format that can run in the web. So it's like an alternative to JavaScript. Uh, so what's cool about this is I could basically say, all right, I'm not going to code up this MIDI player. It's too hard. Um, I'm just going to use um, this C library that exists uh, that hasn't been updated. Actually, I guess so. it was updated in September 15th. Okay. But um, yeah, so this is just a bit of C code, about 1,000 lines of C code. And um, you provide it with the instrument sounds, and then it can play back uh, MIDI files. 
So before, we, before I could use it, though, here's the thing. It expects all of these instruments to be in a folder on your computer, right? Like on the file system. But we're trying to play it now in the browser, and there's no file system in the browser. So one of the big challenges, challenges if you're using mscriptum to take native code and, and make it run in the, in the browser is actually that uh, you need to consider like, if it's interacting with the file system or anything else that is not available in the browser. And so uh, usually what you have to do is go into the C code or the Rust code or whatever it is and change it in a certain way so that uh, it can interact better with JavaScript. So like, what we're going to do here is, this, code, this is a function in C here, so don't be intimidated. I know we're all JavaScript developers. It's just going to be a couple of slides of C. But um, this loads an instrument, and what it does is it, if it fails to find the instrument on the file system, then it prints out this message. So we're going to add two lines here where we just basically say, save the name of the, the string, the name of the instrument, into an array, and then just increment this number here. So we'll just keep track of how many instruments we tried to load that were not actually on the file system. So what Inscriptin is doing is it has a fake file system. And uh, initially, there's no instruments in that file system. It's an empty file system. And so what we want to do, we don't want to just load every possible instrument, because there's 128 of them. We don't want to load them all in and put them into this fake file system. We want to actually just detect, when we try to play a song, what instruments does it try to load? Then we can go and just load those instruments lazily. So um, this is how we, we, we expose the, the count of missing instruments. And then here, we actually uh, we, we allow the, the JavaScript to look up, basically, a, a, an index in that array and get back the string name of the instrument. So using these two um, functions, the JavaScript code can actually find out what uh, instruments the MIDI was trying to use. And then we, it can go and do like a fetch request to go get them. And so then once it gets those, it's going to write them into the file system, this fake file system that Inscripten gives us, using these two uh, functions here. Uh, and this is the other thing that's kind of weird about uh, Inscripten. You actually can use pointers in JavaScript. Like, like yes, yes, point, like C pointers. Um, when you, call a, you can call a function like malloc, and that's going to go malloc some memory on this fake heap that it's created for you. And it gives you back uh, a pointer, but really, since it's JavaScript, it's just a number. There's no pointer. It's literally giving you back a number, which is representing the memory address. Um, and then you can free it, just like you can in, in C. And um, if you get back a car star, which is a pointer to an array of characters, which is how C does strings, then you, um, you obviously can't do anything with that pointer, but you can call pointer stringify, and then it will go and read out all the characters and give you back a JavaScript string. So it's pretty wild, I think. Like, uh, I mean, it's like, what is going on here? We're doing like C, you know, we're doing like memory ma management in, in JavaScript. Um, okay, so, so let's, um, let's like write this function that loads a song. So we have this buffer that contains the MIDI. So we're gonna malloc memory we're going to load the MIDI into memory. And then these two lines here just basically just initialize the MIDI library to give us a, uh, a uh, pointer to a song. Now, this is JavaScript here, by the way. This is JavaScript. We're calling into the like, C land from JavaScript. I'd never done this before, and I thought it was just, it's like really crazy that, that this is how it works. Um, and so anyway, yeah, we, we basically get back this pointer to a song that's been initialized by the C code. Now, let's see, what are we trying to do? I, as I mentioned before, so we've we try to load this song, but then there's going to be no instruments. So we, we call get missing instruments, which gives us back an, uh, an, uh, an array of um, instruments. Actually, what? This should be, should be your instruments.length, because it's, um, it's an array. But anyway, we, um, we, then, um, we then basically load all the missing instruments, and we wait for that to finish. Uh, once we have all the instruments, we can actually... Uh, Basically, delete the song and reload it now, because now we've actually written the instruments into the file system. Does this make sense? Am I... Uh, okay. People look a little bit confused. Uh, <laughs> um, I know this is not like normal JavaScript code, but it's like, it's like not that bad. For what, it's, for what you're getting with WebAssembly, it's kind of crazy. You know? I mean, like, I didn't have to write this thousand lines of, of, of MIDI, difficult MIDI code. I just have to like, write a few weird lines like this, and now I get to you know, access it. So then we just start the song just like that, and it should start playing. So um, how do we actually get the missing instruments? So remember we created those two C functions that expose the number of missing instruments and then the array of the names of the instruments? 
So what we do is we just, um, we, we can load, uh, we call the, the count function, which gives us the uh, number of missing instruments. And we just go over and ask it for the name of them and put it into this, uh, into this array here. Uh, and we want to, um, we also, we need to stringify the names though, like I said, because they're going to be um, in that car star format. And we just return that. Uh, and then to go and actually get the instrument, this is just normal JavaScript, we just fetch it as a buffer. And then we, we, uh, we write it into the, uh, the file system. Does this kind of make sense? What's going on? Okay, so <laughs> the idea is we don't want to have all these, all these, all these files uh, you know, loaded up front because every instrument is like really big. So 128 instruments, we have to load like you know, 100 megabytes of sound just to be able to play back a single file. Okay, so now we, we have, what, what that function gives us is it gives us a waveform audio. So we actually have to put it into another API uh, called Web Audio that will actually play it. So how does that work? So I'm not going to go over the details of this. It's not that important. But the idea is this is the sort of standard boilerplate for how you set up a web audio, um, web audio code. So we're going to get now this, this uh, we, we call read MIDI data, which populates an array of all of the raw audio. I mean, I can tell you, this is actually not the right talk for this time, because you all are, are falling asleep because it's uh, the end of the conference. <laughs> so I'll try, to, I'll try to go a little quicker here. We got the left speaker and the right speaker here. And then we um, basically read out the uh, audio into each of the speakers and then zero out the rest of it. And then we can um, basically get out the, um, the, uh, the, the MIDI. OK, so <laughs> apologies. Anyway, the point is this is an NPM package. You can install it and use it. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and this is how you use it. It's super easy. You just, you just require it. You make, a, you make a, a constructor, you call load, and then you call play. So much easier, right? <laughs> Basically, you just wrap up all the ugly WebAssembly into this, uh, and then it, it makes it very easy to use. Um, OK, so last step here to make this go, come full circle. We need to make uh, a web component now. So who here has heard of web components? OK, who's used a web component? OK, yeah, I've never used a web component. Um, this is like a good chance to use a web component, I thought. So, Basically, what we're trying to do is we have um, this is the tag that has been that is no longer part of the web platform, right? BG Sound. We want to um, make basically this work down here. And so, why is there a dash in uh, the new BG Sound? Well, web components actually require you to put a dash in the name of your tag. This is just so that there's no chance that a web component will conflict with a future tag that might be introduced by the browsers, right? So you have to have a dash in the name. And then this script here actually is the script that makes this tag work. So if we didn't have the script, this would just be uh, seen as an unrecognized element by the browser. So these two together will, will, will make that work. Um, and web components are actually super easy to use. They look almost kind of like React um, components. So you just extend the, the uh, DOM HTML element. And you have this function get, that gets called when the component is rendered, just like in React. Um, and so in that uh, function, we're going to go ahead and initialize the MIDI player. And then we're going to load the, whatever the user set as the source attribute on the, on the tag. And then we just call play. Simple as that, right? And then uh, we have a destroy uh, method. And then, oh yeah, and the last thing is actually really important, is you need to tell the, basically tell the browser what you want to name the tag. Um, and this is a global uh, name that will sort of take over that name, that tag, for the whole page. And has to be unique across your whole um, web app. Um, OK, and that's it. So, so this is also a, a package you can install in NPM. Um, and and um, now what I was going to do was go and actually see if we can see what this looks like. Um, so I, have, I found my old website, my very first website right here. It's really embarrassing. Um, yeah, so do you want your voice to be heard? There's a guest book. Um, you know my favorite part of this website is? Down here, do you see this? Click here to leave. I don't know why I, 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 was, I, I don't understand. So if you click it, look what happens. <laughs> OK, so, so say that we actually really want to leave. So we click, we want to leave. And then it gives you a link, one more chance to come back if you want to come back. <laughs> I don't know what, what that was about. Anyway, this is really embarrassing. Um, but none of that, you notice there's no music on any of the pages. 
And if we go look at the source code here and we find the, the tag, it's BG sound here. So this is the name of the, the, the MIDI, the MIDI uh, name. Um, it's, it, so the tag doesn't work. So we can actually go in here and uh, just do a, do a find and replace. Can everyone see this? Um, basically just going to replace BG sound with the script and then uh, replacing it with the web component version of the tag. So I'm just going to do a replace across the whole project. Uh, it's going to replace 16 occurrences. OK, save all. Now if I refresh, we should get something. Nice. Just like that, we brought it back. <laughs> Actually, a, kind of a nice collection here of, of different. Um, this one's really embarrassing. Who knows the game Kingdom Hearts? Yeah, okay. <laughs> There's a page here with the lyrics um, that's really embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, I was also a fan of the Hercules TV show. Does anybody remember this show? Yeah. <laughs> Um, what else do we got here? Oh, why is it not playing this, the music? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, and then there's a really good one here um, under um, PlayStation 2. So if you go to PlayStation 2, guess what you see? Makes no sense. <laughs> And everything is coming soon. Why is it always coming soon? Like, every page on the early web was always coming soon with the construction gift. Makes no sense. Anyway, um, oh yeah, and then my email address was ps2man2003 at netscape.net. <laughs> yes, and I was on AIM as well, of course. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, so I uh, wanted to mention that basically, so the, 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 that, that zip file of, of 100,000 MIDIs that I collected, I put them online, uh, and there's this website you can go to called BitMIDI where you can see them, um, and you can search for anything that you're interested in, so like, if you want to play Mario MIDIs, you can find a bunch, and any of these should just play back. So there's, just basically you can search for anything. Someone shout out something that you think is... Titanic, okay. Yep, we got one of those. <laughs> okay. So yeah, and then there's a little random button. Um, it's just good fun. So you can go peruse these old files, and now they all play back. And um, uh, the site was built with Preact, and it's open source, so you can go ahead and take a look at the code if you're interested in how it works. Um, and one other thing is I wanted to mention just a little bit about how I built the site. So I built this about five, five months ago. You can see here all these MIDIs are, are um, uh, oh, actually, you can't see because I switched back to the, that's fine. Um, basically, so I built it about five months ago, and it took about, you know, a couple months to, of just sort of as a side project working on it. And, um, but I haven't worked on it in, like in the last three months because I've been in school studying for my, my graduate degree, like I mentioned. But what's cool is that the traffic to the site's been sort of steadily increasing. Um, so I, I looked at the Google Analytics before uh, making the talk here, and um, it's going up. It's actually getting about 10,000 views a day at this point, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, like not bad, right? Um, I think people actually find it useful. So if you have like a weird idea for a website, you know, I think um, you should pursue it. Um, <laughs> um, it's actually it's actually really cool. I mean, we're we're uh, we're extremely lucky as programmers, I think. Um, because programming is the closest thing that there is to magic in the world. Uh, I really like this quote here from uh, The Mythical Man Month um, by uh, Fred Brooks. Uh, let me just read it to you. So it goes, the programmer, like the poet, works only slightly removed from pure thought stuff. He builds castles in the air, from air, creating by exertion of the imagination. Few media of creation are so flexible so easy to polish and rework, so readily capable of realizing grand conceptual structures. Yet the program construct, unlike the poet's words, is real in the sense that it moves and works, producing visible outputs separate from the construct itself. It prints results, draws pictures, produces sounds, moves arms, 
The magic of myth and legend has come true in our time. One types the correct incantation on a keyboard, and a display screen comes to life, showing things that never were nor could be. So, I don't know, I think this is like really cool. It's really beautiful. Um, we can basically build anything we think of as programmers. And I think it's so cool that we have this power. And JavaScript programmers especially, because we can reach so many people through the power of the web. The web is like the most you know, successful and wide-reaching uh, platform that there is. So I just wanted to end with uh, a call to action. I hope that every one of you makes a goal to build something cool like outside of work. Um, and uh, I know that probably a lot of your employers paid for you to come to this conference, so I shouldn't be saying this, but <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be a business. Um, you know, it can be something kind of silly like BitMidi. Um, or if you already have a hobby project, then I hope that you spend more time on it and take it to the next level. Um, and if you have a half-finished project, like a lot of us do, um, then I encourage you to put the finishing touches on it and release it to the world, because the world needs more fun, uh, quirky, and independent uh, projects out there. So um, thanks a lot.